Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna look at the Supermicro Superblade platform, and not just one of them, because now there are three different Supermicro Superblade options. That's a lot. Now the Supermicro Superblade platform is so big that we don't often get to review them. In fact, the last time we reviewed the platform was when it was still 7U, that was back in the Xeon E5 V3 V4 generation, so several years ago. In fact, there's a fun story about that. The systems were so big and we didn't really at that point have any way to get them to the data center. So I actually had to go rent a U-Haul and we put the Supermicro Superblade platform in the back of a U-Haul van, drove it across the Silicon Valley to Sunnyvale from Supermicro headquarters. And then we used the forklifts on both ends to get it in and out of the data center. So these things are actually pretty big. And the reason that we don't review them too often is just because, well, you know, forklifts and renting U-Hauls and stuff like that, there's actually a lot of work involved. But since we're doing the Supermicro series, we took the opportunity to have those brought into the demo room so we could take a look at them at Supermicro and we didn't have to bring them into the lab. But a lot has changed since those seven U days. Since our old review, Supermicro has innovated on form factors. So now instead of just a 7U Superblade platform, there's a 4U, a 6U, and an 8U platform. This is a little bit different than a lot of Supermicro's competitors that really focus on either standardizing on a single platform and just saying, okay, we're gonna figure out how to put all of our different use cases in that single blade platform. There are also a lot of white box players that don't even get into blades because they require so much networking and system level integration that they just don't do it. Yet Supermicro has three different platforms because one just simply isn't good enough because there's opportunity to tailor the systems to specific applications and use cases. So there are three different platforms, but there's a lot going on here beyond just the systems themselves. If you think about the thrust of a system like these super blades, there's a much broader question that they're actually trying to answer. Sheet metal, fans, power supplies, often switches and backplanes, all these components are able to be leveraged across more than just a single generation of compute servers. And so with blade servers, you get the opportunity to use all of those components and reuse them with subsequent generations. Now, on one hand, it makes a lot of economic sense because you don't have to keep purchasing these things over and over again, but there's a much broader impact if you really get down to the details because Take that sheet metal chassis, for example. You don't need to go get the raw materials of steel together, press it into and shape it into the chassis, then ship that chassis across, you know, usually an ocean to get into a data center and then have all the labor to go pull it out and all that kind of stuff, right? So there is a lot going on here that by you reusing the chassis fans, networking backplanes, power supplies, all those components, you're actually doing something that is environmentally friendly. And that's something as an IT industry that I think we need to look at and really think a little bit more seriously, like can we actually start using systems and our systems smarter and reusing components that aren't gonna fail? Let's face it, a steel chassis that's in a controlled environment like a data center is not going to fail in three to five years like a normal server replacement life cycle. So like normal, let's get in the car and go check these things out. So I'm headed over straight down 237 right now. And the purpose of this is that we're actually gonna go take a look at some products that I would normally take a look at during trade show coverage, but because we don't have trade shows this year, we didn't get to go do. Now I got to send Supermicro a list of all the products that I wanted to go look at. I got to, you know, make that list myself. I get to say whatever the heck I want, but Supermicro said that they'd get the products for me. They'd also get as many product managers as were feeling comfortable coming into the office as soon as the shelter in place order was over. Now, just for full disclosure here, Supermicro did provide the products because we're gonna do it in their demo room. They're providing the office space. They're also filming. The one thing that's gonna be interesting is we have to wear masks in this video because we're gonna be in the office and corporate policy says we have to wear masks. So get ready for that. Supermicro's actually changed a lot in these systems and they now have a full line with some different capabilities. 
Taking a quick pause here, there's two things I wanna point out because this is the eighth video that we've done in this series and something that you're gonna notice is that we were in the Supermicro demo room in their headquarters and this demo room is right next to the door that's actually the main entrance to their main lobby. And so there are constantly people moving in and out, especially towards the end of the day, which was the time that we're actually filming this. The other thing I wanna point out is that behind those windows where the shotgun mics are pointed, there's actually a freeway. And so we're gonna put some music there because otherwise there's trucks going by every few seconds. Second is a little bit more exciting, and that is my mask. Now, you might be saying to yourself, hey, doesn't Patrick's mask look like it's a little bit tilted to the side? And you might think, well, of course that can't be because there are other people in the room and somebody would have clearly told Patrick to align his mask properly so he didn't look like a big dork. And since we're making that assumption, the only possible explanation is that we're seeing an optical illusion here that is clearly the impact of the lens and optics and all kinds of stuff like that because there's no way that I'm just looking like a big dork in these, right? Now, the first one is the For You platform. And some, and even I did this at first, may think that this For You platform is just half of the 8U platform, but it's not. This For You platform actually has 14 nodes in it which means that you get a really high density and the idea with this with high density and shared chassis and networking and storage means that you actually get a lot of cost savings in something like this and you get a lot of density. So if you think about why this is really cool, if you look at the back of the system, you can tell that with the switches and with the common power supplies, you have redundancy, but you don't necessarily need a ton of cables. I mean, you're going from probably over a hundred cables down to, you could probably run the system on 10 cables, maybe even less if you really wanted to. And probably at the max, you're probably using about 20 cables. So the order, you're, you're basically an order of magnitude fewer cables by using a system like this than if you had individual servers. Plus you have operational savings and savings in your rack space since you get higher density. And so there's a lot of really cool features that this, I didn't even know Supermicro had this platform before I saw it in the demo room. Okay, the second system or new system since we've done a Superblade review is the 6U Superblade. Now, the 6U Superblade is actually really interesting because it supports both single socket and dual socket servers, which you may not think is really crazy at first, but this actually supports not just Xeon Scalable and the Xeon Scalable SP processors, like first and second generation Xeon Scalable, but it also supports the Xeon W line. So Xeon W is really interesting because it gives you the capability, especially if you have folks that need really high per core performance, such as if you're doing CAD CAM work or something like that, design work where you need to optimize on core frequencies, this is the type of solution that is actually for those workloads. Designing for high TDP CPUs is really important for future generations. If we think about it, TDPs are rising and if we wanna get higher frequencies with higher core counts, we are gonna see higher power consumption. And so with higher TDP CPUs, we also need these high density platforms to have better power and cooling delivery so that they can power and they can cool those new chips. So we can't really get into details about that today, but if you look forward in some of the forward looking pieces we've had on SDH, you can tell that we're in for the TDP of CPUs rising significantly over the next few years. And this is the type of system that is designed precisely for that. Now, the big one, and probably the one that's most analogous to the one that we reviewed previously, is this guy. Now, this is the 8U Supermicro Superblade platform. And you can see that there are two rows in this particular configuration. There are two rows of 10 nodes each. Now, these nodes can be single socket nodes. They can be dual socket nodes. You can have GPU nodes in these as well. And something that's really cool, and you can see it up here, is that there are four socket nodes as well. And you don't just have the option of using Xeon Scalable in here. You have options of using single socket solutions, dual socket solutions, all different kinds of CPUs in this chassis, which gives you a lot of flexibility where you can deploy one type of chassis and you can also use a whole bunch of different types of nodes. Now these nodes have different storage configurations. So for example, this, you may see that there's only eight drives on this four socket node up front, and these are you know, U.2 standard U.2 two and a half inch drives, but there are also additional six drives that are in the back of this, so you can have a whole bunch of NVMe storage in a single node. 
On the networking side, this thing supports 10, 25 gig ethernet, but also has 100 gig options, such as you can put 100 gig InfiniBand if you're running HPC applications, you could have 100 gig OmniPath if you're still running Intel OmniPath. And I think this actually is going up to 200 gig InfiniBand in the not too distant future. So when it comes to Supermicro Superblades, the head guy and the senior director of the blade program at Supermicro is Rafael Wong. And so I just kind of want to ask you a couple questions. So what are the typical applications that you see being run on these Superblades? I mean, why are people buying these and what are they running on? Because of the high core count, high density, best total cost of ownership, uh, the customer uh, usually use our Superblade for virtualization, hybrid cloud, HPC kind of uh, applications. All right, so Rahel, give me an example of something in this system that we wouldn't normally know that was designed for a specific customer, a specific industry. Like what's unique or what makes, what's a unique feature that we wouldn't know about otherwise? Very good question. One of the many unique design that uh, we've done on the, the Superblade platform, perhaps it's the uh, GPU Blade. We optimize everything that, and deliver the highest density for GPU cloud gaming architecture it, with this Xeon processor-based GPU play, we can support up to two GPU per node. So you have 40 GPU per 8U. That is the highest density, lowest cost platform for cloud gaming. Rafael, thank you for coming in. And for those out there in our audience, we're definitely going to have more Superblade content coming out on STH in the near future. So summing this all up, Supermicro has a really wide range of Blade servers in their Superblade line. And just being clear, we're only talking about Superblade here. We did a review of the Microblade platform. So there's the Microblade platform that we're not even talking about in this video. There's also a bunch of Supermicro multi-node systems that don't have built-in networking, so they aren't Blade servers. So if you wanna get into modular servers and maybe you have some kind of specific requirement or you have some specific vision of what you want, you should give Supermicro a look because they have a whole bunch of different form factors and one of them might be right for what you're looking for. It's a lot more tailored approach than just having one major platform and assuming that everything can fit into that platform. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and this series. And if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed yet, why not go click subscribe, turn on some notifications so you can see the next time we come out with a new video. We have a lot more video coming in the coming quarters, so definitely subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.